Hey guys, hoping all is well with everybody. In this video, we're going to be continuing on with the Heroic Dogs Read Along by Lou Jefferson. Uh, more specifically, we're going to be continuing the story of where we left off from um, Lassie and Amundsen. Um, just a little review. When we were reading the first part, we learned a little bit um, about Amundsen and how he was a Norwegian, and Lassie was a Greenland dog, and there was an expedition planned for um, being the first to ever reach the South Pole. So let's continue on. Setting off. Anxious to begin, they set out for the South Pole on September 8th. At one point, the temperature dipped to minus 69 degrees. The dog's feet froze, and two dogs froze to death while sleeping. It was too cold for the men to sleep. On the third day, they returned to the hut to wait for warmer weather. On October 19th, they set out again with 52 dogs, 4 sleds, and 5 men. They were pleased at the speed the dogs made on the smooth surface. Each day at lunch, they built a cairn, the mound a few feet high, with notes inside of the direction to the last cairn and the direction they were heading. These cairns made the return trip go smoothly. To those of us not sled dog explorers, expeditions like this seem cruel. Amundsen admired the sled dogs, but they were work dogs, not pets. The sad fact of their lives was that on long trips, most were expected to die. The way other men ran dogs was to run them until they died from exhaustion, then feed their meat to the surviving dogs. Amundsen planned to use more dogs than others would. He planned to kill most of them humanely, not work them to death. They were saddened by the deaths of the dogs, but it was a fact of life for them that the meat was needed for survival of the dogs who would finish the expedition. On November 21st, there were 42 dogs alive when they reached the 10,000 foot summit of the Transarctic Mountains, the longest mountain range in the world. And here is a picture of Amundsen and men in the hut in Antarctica. Okay. There, as planned, they shot 24 of the dogs. Each man butchered his own dogs. It was a somber evening when the test was complete. The surviving dogs were allowed to eat as much of the meat as they wanted. The dog meat was also made into a soup for the men. The remaining meat was buried in snow for the trip back. They stayed for several days on the summit waiting for the weather to clear. They finally left what they called the butcher shop, descended the mountain, then began the more gradual climb to the South Pole. On December 8th, they passed Shackleton's mark of 88 degrees south, 95 miles from the pole. When they neared the South Pole on December 14th, they urged Amundsen to walk ahead so he would be the first man to reach it. They stayed at the pole for three days to calculate the most precise location of the pole. They then erected a tent and left a note for Scott. With lighter sleds and knowing the way back, they returned to the hut on January 25th, 1912 with two sleds and 11 dogs. It had taken 99 days to travel 1,860 miles. The men loaded the Fram with equipment and supplies quickly and left Antarctica on January 30th. They reached Tasmania on March 7th, where Amundsen could telegraph their success to his brother. What happened to Scott? Scott left his base camp four days after Amundsen. He reached the South Pole January 18th, 2012, 35 days behind Amundsen. Scott reached the South Pole, but died with four others on the way back. Much ha has been written of his mistakes. He, he relied on motorized sleds and ponies, having just a few dogs. The motorized sleds and failed, and the ponies died or had to be killed. Scott had to use men to pull the sleds much of the way. He had also undersupplied the expedition. With many more men, he had a third of the supplies as Amundsen had. He used all wool clothes while Amundsen had animal skins and fur for the colder times. Amundsen also had lightweight materials for the, the times that the men might sweat while skiing. Finally, Sky had supplies enough for four men for the final push to the pole, put five, put, but took five men instead. He also had fewer supply depots pre-placed before the beginning. 
And here's a picture of Oscar visiting at the South Pole on December 14, 1911. Lassie and Amundsen Endings Sadly, Lassie made it to the South Pole, but was the first dog killed on the way back. On December 19th, Amundsen wrote that he was his favorite dog, but had worn himself out completely. Amundsen died in 18, 1928 in a plane crash in the Arctic. He was with a group looking to rescue a lost dirigible. He was 55 years old. And that is the end of the story of Lassie and Amundsen. I hope you guys enjoyed that story, and I look forward to seeing you in the next story, which is going to be Bothy with Renulf and Virginia Phoenix. And I hope you guys have a great day, and please take good care of yourselves. We'll see you then. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.